Welcome to Intact, your weekly talk show from Press Express about news and newsmakers from India, Bangladesh and beyond. We bring you an in-depth look at the top stories that are making headlines. I'm Tulika, your host, bringing you a special edition from the campus at the University of Dhaka. From just three faculties and 800 students in 1921, the University of Dhaka has come a long way in its 103 years of existence to more than 45,000 students and 74 colleges now. It's also a prime center for shaping and defining the youth of the nation and therefore its future. But what's the road ahead and what are the roadblocks? Thank you for joining us today. So an ex-student and now its vice-chancellor, the journey must have been quite something. This university is the issue of academic, highest academic exercise, not in our country, around the region. We have around 96 entities in our universities, it's academic entities, and this university, as you mentioned, that making and shaping the nations in a different way, in terms of providing that degree to the students. So far, we have provided degrees around 300,000 students in one hand. On the other hand, the students and the faculty members of this university are conducting research, and that research will be used for the development of the nation. This university is also a center of democracy exercises. Here in the British regime, this university uh, well, uh, this university provided teams for tours to the political leaders. Yeah. Really the history is fascinating and like you were saying, it's contributed to the freedom struggle. It's a huge milestone. But we are looking at world rankings now for your university that was once called the Oxford of the East. What about the world rankings? It's not even in the first 500. In Asia, it's in the top 200. In South Asia, it's 19th. But in world rankings, it's not even in the top 500. How do you want to address and make it in the top 500? In order to achieve the ranking, we need the publications, foreign students, foreign teachers. <laughs> The student uh, uh, and faculty member ratio, as well as outlook of the university. This year, Times Higher Education, in Times Higher Education ranking, this university position is in, in that context 657. Mm -hmm. So it is better than the uh, previous years. We are hopeful that we have uh, uh, our research will increase in this university. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, the student teachers ratio uh, to make the classroom interactive, uh, hoping to make it uh, relatively higher. And for the student context, we are going to offer some uh, scholarship. Okay. So we hope we get the foreign uh, students. Uh, Besides this, method of instruction is very important. So in this university, uh, though officially you mentioned that method of instruction. It's English, mm -hmm. but it's not always happened in the past. Mm -hmm. So we are going to provide training to our faculty members to oh, yeah. lecture in English. So by that way, uh, we are planning to improve the rank. Okay. But I tell you one thing: ranking is the is uh, in the Western concept. If we consider the overall achievement of this university. It is in no case, uh, I would like to say, uh, it is this, uh, in any case, its position is uh, better uh, uh, to some grand university across the world. On the other hand, our rank, it would not be as light as the Western University <laughs> because they are buzzed. For example, if I talk about the university called in London where I am working at the visiting professor, <laughs> their budget is more than two billion. Yes. Yes. But our budget is big. Mm -hmm. If I talk about the University of the Tokyo, their budget is around 1.8 billion US dollars. So from that context, mm -hmm. our budget is very minimum. We have to work with the path. You're on the point when you talk about giving academic excellence within limited resources. And this is where I also want to talk about the threat or let's say the challenge of private university. We see a lot of inequality here while public universities such as the University of Dhaka 
uh, have that unmatched reputation that they give the students, that unmatched academic excellence. But there are overcrowded classrooms on the other hand, the resources are limited. On the other hand, the private universities may not give that kind of reputation, but the resources are so much more for students. So do you see a kind of uh, gap that you would like to address here? The quality of the students, the quality of the students of the Dhaka University is much more higher than the students of the uh, uh, other university, whether this is the private or this is the public university. Because in the entry level examination, we used to get the students who are the best of the best of the country and competed in the examination, we select our students. So, our students is originally, when we, with that intake of our students, like originally they are the brilliant. Second thing, uh, our students are doing better in home and abroad, if you consider uh, the, 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 that, with the private universities. Uh, if you consider uh, the decision maker of the country, almost 75 to 80 percent cases, that university students are the decision maker. Uh, in various sectors in this We are discussing the gap between private versus public universities and even when it comes to faculty, uh, there are higher salaries that the private institutions offer. Uh, I was going through some comparisons and uh, for example in a public university, a lecturer under a grade 9 pay scale would earn around 35,000 taka which is $320 in a month. These are we a private institution where he or she would earn almost 50,000 taka, which is 459 to his hours. So how do you plan to close and shorten this gap? You know, the salary structure of this university, uh, we are following the national pay scale. And our faculty members, they are happy with that national pay scale. Okay. The reason is, social value uh, and the respect of the faculty members of the okay. university being higher in the country uh, with regard to our okay. private uh, universities. Well, hopefully that happens. You also mentioned research earlier a few times. And I want to pick your brains on this because research remains an area of concern among the students as well, among the different other university professors and lecturers that I have interacted with. Because uh, you may, uh, you know, students may want to have a research on new, uh, newer areas like nanotechnology or artificial intelligence. Are those opportunities limited in research? We have that opportunities, but limited is scary. We have the master plan, both the academic master plan and, okay. the, and the infrastructure master plan. In academic master plan, uh, our plan is to uh, uh, to, uh, to target the nano system in nano, or to target the nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, other uh, areas of the fourth industrial revolution, and you know fifth industrial revolutions are at uh, fourth industrial revolution we are closing. So we are also uh, also taking that probably the issue of the uh, fifth industrial revolution. So. By that way, within our limited resource, uh, yeah, our plan is to approach the practical areas mm -hmm. or the practical issues uh, 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 by which we, uh, we, it will be possible for us to bring uh, our education into the uh, global standard level. Well, uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has this vision for Bangladesh, which is the Smart Bangladesh mission. And you're sitting at the center of, you know, the, the seat where thousands of students pass out who are going to be a part of that smart Bangladesh in the future. And it's not just a vision about creating smart infrastructure. It's also about creating smart people, smart youth that connect with it, that are technically equipped uh, to be a part of that smart Bangladesh. When you talk of curriculum, what are the kind of roadmaps you are giving your students to be a good part of that vision. Then there are four issues. One is the smart citizen, the smart governance, that is smart society, and the smart economics. So now we are planning to revisit our academic curriculum. 
uh, related to the uh, smart Bangladesh, uh, having uh, the relation with these four areas. Uh, in the meantime, I have given responsibility to some of our team. Mm -hmm. uh, a team has been formed of the team. I have given responsibility to that team uh, uh, to exercise uh, how to bring this university as a smart university, how this campus could be a, a smart campus. Then we can support our government to build the nation, uh, having the, uh, the cons uh, having the uh, areas uh, uh, of smart Bangladesh. So a smart campus for a smart Bangladesh. A smart campus, of course, for a smart Bangladesh. Okay. Campus politics is a very important part of university life. Like you said, uh, opposition ideas, diverse ideas are present in the campus and they are most welcome. But do you think campus politics in a student's life should give them that kind of academic freedom or should it be done in moderation? I can say that some group of people is mass more conscious, some group of the people means the student, some group of the students are relatively political concern, less conscious. That makes the difference in the campus. And I hope uh, our students the related, uh, having, if it is possible to give, uh, I would like to say, more books and other sort of uh, extracurricular activities uh, to our students. There are allegations by the opposition that uh, the University of Dhaka is basically a tool that is being used by the government, uh, the, the ruling party, Awami League, to nurture its ideologies and policy. If there is a specific allegation, and then Dhaka University can add or would like to address that allegation. It happened even earlier. So we are ready to address the uh, allegation that you mentioned. Uh, 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 for example, hmm. I face demonstration, or our uh, previous vice chancellors they also face demonstration. Sometimes from the already, sometimes from the government political student wing, <laughs> sometimes from the opposition student wing. So when we see any sort of demonstration or any uh, demands uh, in black and white when we did, we try always to address that sort of demands. So the question what you raise regarding the negation to the university and the faculty members that we do here giving this space to the government uh, political students uh, uh, wing, that's not a new thing. Okay, well earlier we went into the campus and spoke with a lot of students about campus politics. Uh, on that note, I'd like to wrap this up. Thank you so much sir for joining us today.